So far we have looked at normal subdivision levels in your geometry. So if we look at our geometry we have different subdivision levels and this is different resolutions of the model. Okay, So we're just subdividing these polygon faces by four each time we go up a subdivision level. However, when we're sculpting we might want the freedom to be able to not worry about subdivision levels and then just what's called retopologize it or have clean topology later on in the sculpting process. So if we want to do that we can use a tool called Dynamesh and this basically creates a mesh with even topology all over it that will adapt when you make changes. Now the big benefit of this if I come into a lower subdivision level and delete lower delete higher and delete lower I have no subdivision levels watch what happens to the geometry when I stretch the geometry I'm going to use the move brush shortcut for brushes is B and then I can use M on the keyboard and then I can go down to move so let's take a part of this geometry and start to stretch it out and watch what happens to the topology it starts to break up and the reason it breaks up is because we're stretching the polygons so we can use Dynamesh to retopologize as we start to pull things out or deform the shape. So to actually turn this into a Dynamesh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to subdivide this. So it's clean topology. So we've got nice clean topology. And then I'm going to come down on the geometry tab down here to what's called Dynamesh. Now once when we open Dynamesh up, we have resolution. This is the resolution of the Dynamesh and we have this button here called Dynamesh. There are other buttons, but we don't need to look at those at this stage. I'm gonna hit Dynamesh now. It's gonna say the mesh is multiple subdivisions. Would you like to freeze subdivision levels before entering Dynamesh mode? I'm gonna click no. Okay, so now you can't see anything, but this mesh has actually been turned into Dynamesh. Notice the topology has changed from what we had before. And what this means now is if I start to stretch this model out like I did earlier, like this, you're going to see that the polygons will stretch. But if I redynamesh it by holding the control key and dragging, it's going to give us lots of topology again to work with. So that's before that's with the redynameshed. So this means that I can start dragging my model and really warping it and then redynamesh by control dragging to give me even topology again. So you can add to the model. So dynamesh is really good for establishing a basic shape and then you can then what's called retopologize it to get subdivision levels. So you see how quickly you can do that. If I was to do that without Dynamesh on, let's go right the way back and try to do this, I would have nowhere to go and it would look horrible. So you can see how powerful this can be to use Dynamesh. So Dynamesh will be used in all, pretty much all of the workshops that I do and it's a good way to be able to change. Now you're going to notice the resolution if I bring this down and I redynamesh it, click no, you're going to see these are bigger now because the resolution of the dynamesh is less. So if I pulled this out I can still dynamesh it by holding the control key and dragging but it's less resolution because I've set less resolution in here. So by increasing this resolution I can actually increase the resolution in here. I'm going to make a slight change and now I'm going to drag and you can see now the resolution is a lot more because I've changed the slider in the resolution tab. So be aware of how and when to use Dynamesh when doing a model. Now when we work on the full project, project that comes with this free guide to ZBrush you'll see how we use it effectively to create a little dinosaur. So let's move on now. So that's how Dynamesh works inside of ZBrush.